What's up guys, it's me, Brandon Johnson from Used Boats TV, and today I'm going to take you for a ride on a 2006 Chaparral 256 SSI Bow Rider. Let's go. Once again, this is Brandon from Used Boats TV. The purpose of this channel is to make a lot of training and how-to videos, as well as boat reviews, all to help enhance your boat ownership experience. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing by clicking down below. Once again, today I'm going to take you out for a ride on this beautiful 2006 Chaparral 256 SSI. We're going to drive it on the water. I'm going to show you how to operate and how she operates. Then we're going to talk about the condition and we're going to finish up with some drone footage. So let's get started. What it really means to live life golden. Now, once you've got your boat in the water, come back here underneath the starboard side aft bench seat, lift this up. Inside, you'll find dual batteries with a switch. Turn your switch to all. The alternator is going to charge all the batteries. Come up to the helm, fire up the boat. Now, if you're going to stop and cove out, maybe listen to the radio, switch it to one. That way, your radio and systems are isolated to a single battery. Then, if you go to start it and you get the old scary click, 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 you can just switch to the other battery, fire the boat up, and you're still good to go. When you're done for the day, be sure and shut. So again, our battery switches are on all. Three things if the boat won't start. Click, 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 it's a dead battery. Turn the key over and turn the key and nothing happens whatsoever. If it's in gear, it won't start. If the battery switches off, it won't start. Uh, the number one reason why people call me after the sale, their boats won't start, is because of the kill switch right here. You accidentally bump it. Basically, it shuts off the charge to the engine. It'll just turn over, but won't fire. We've got it up. We're in neutral. Batteries are on. Fire's right up. Okay. So, let's review some things here at the helm. We have tilt steering. We have a nice, beautiful dash. So, shifting. Really easy. Pushing the button in. Gauges into forward. The Bravo 3 is extremely easy to maneuver. It has a definitive catch for forward right here. You only have to push in the button to engage it into gear, not to take it out. Reverse, same way. Definitive catch, and your throttle range is beyond that. Okay? But we're going to go forward. You always want to kind of look at your depth, and we're at 50 feet. I know how accurate this is because of these buoys, it's 50 feet. Um, watch your depth when you take off, simply because when you get the boat in the water from the boat ramp, you don't want to be in like two feet of water and put your drive down. Your drive is right here. This is the trim gauge. Okay? the trim. So as long as that's all the way down, you're good to go. You want to take off with it all the way down. I'm going to include a link in the description below that explains how tilt and trim works for those of you that are that uh, need a little brushing up on the subject. So shut this windshield before we take off. It's just a habit. This fits nicely. If you always bow with your windshield open, eventually this windshield begins to bow against the window itself to the port side. But I've had a lot of people excited to drive as they accelerate, they have their finger on the trim up button and the outdrive comes out of the water, okay? You always want to listen. When it's up, you hear it going up. When it goes down all the way, it makes that screaming sound. Blower, right here off the dash, I'm gonna zoom in, Bill. So this is the blower that ventilates the engine compartment. Your horns. It's right here. Bilge pump's automatic, so you probably never use that. When we get this boat off the water, since it's getting ready to storm, I'm gonna send it in to detail. When I send it in to detail and it's done, I'm gonna come back in here and show you that all this stuff works. I'll probably edit this stuff into this portion of the video. But driving at night, that's the red and green built up front, built in. Then in the white light that'll plug in the back. In the middle is off, all the way down, stopped at night, anchor light. Docking lights right here, headlights in the front. <laughs> Engine room lights, self explanatory, courtesy. See lights are in the floor. We're just going to show that. Depth finder is right here. Button for it. 
water pressure. We never use the water tank because usually it smells terrible and you can't drink it. But if you want to use it, this is the button you push. Now, captain's call exhaust. Very important to point this out. See how good that baby sounds? What you're doing here is you're, you're choosing how your boat pumps out the water it uses to keep the engine cool, okay? Combined with that is exhaust. So if we're running pretty hard, you know, 2,500 RPM or, or above, that's really putting a lot of water pressure through there. So what makes that sound change is flappers in there. And if we hit this button, we're moving those flappers. So maybe not the first time or the 10th time, but one of these times you'll break that. So only select this at idle speed. Um, power engine hatch is right here. There's no wiper, but a button for one. Accessories right here. Stereo's on the key. If you're coved out, turn the key to the left in the accessory position. So now that we understand what the buttons and switches do, I'm going to take the camera from Mr. Bill here, and I'm going to drive the boat. As I drive the boat, I'm going to keep it trimmed all the way down um, and hit a top speed. I'm also going to track that with GPS on my phone, and then I'm going to trim up so that we can see what the top speed will do. We just replaced the gimbal on this boat, therefore the Speedo may read a little inaccurately at first as it has air bubbles in it until we get those cleared out. It may be kind of all over the place. So now I'm going to take that from Bill and we're going to run this Chaparral 256 SSI Bow Rider. Okay, now I'm getting ready to run your boat. So we got her trimmed all the way down with the outdrive, trying to beat this here storm. We are engaged into gear. Again, to shift it, put it in gear, trim it all the way down to start. Let's go. So with the Bravo 3, it really eases the boat right onto plane. The nose settles nice and smooth up at the bow. We don't have a lot of bow rise because the Bravo 3 keeps her pushed down. So a nice little cruise speed is right around in here, around 3,000 RPM, which is 31 miles an hour. So again, we are trimmed all the way down. Give her a little more, 4,000 RPM at 35 miles an hour, 37 miles an hour, 4,200 RPM. Let's go ahead and give her what she's got. So right there is about 4,400 miles per hour, 39 miles per hour, 4,500 RPM, 39 miles an hour. Now we'll trim up. We're starting to approach 4,800 RPM, 40 miles an hour, 41. Let's go, let's keep pushing her. 42. Trim back down a little bit. So right there, kind of in the mid 40s, when she warms up will be our top speed. So this thing turns extremely well. See here, we can turn, whip right back around. Always trim down before you do this, but the boat has a nice bank to it kicking off that rooster tail. Let the nose settle. Oh, it's got a Bravo 3. We'll just push it again. There we go. So let's start again at a dead stop. And this time, let's turn our captain's call on. Now. Oh yeah, listen to that baby come out of the water. Thirty-seven miles an hour on GPS. Thirty-eight. Trim her up. Forty-three, forty-five miles an hour. So we're holding steady at forty-five, forty-six, forty-five. 10 how your exhaust pumps out the water and the exhaust it use it you want to leave that trim all the way down until you come up on the plane I'm gonna include a link to this I'm gonna
Okay, so we'll take a hard look at the gel coat here. Just drop down to the hole. So the lifting straights, shine, and keel are all in beautiful condition. So come on hole side, it's got the stainless steel valve scuff plate, valve boarding ladder, docking light housings. Really nothing bad to say out here. I've been around it quite a few times. I did replace the L on one side. I can't remember which side it was. It's the other side. Captain's call exhaust. Taking a look at our swim platform trim. It's in great shape. There's a Bravo 3, so the propellers are awesome. Skag is awesome. Now, it had a little bit of like trousers on it, so I did use some touch up paint here. Let's see if you look close. But it turned out great. There you go. Coming around to the starboard side, take a look at the gel coat. Now right here in the rub rail, you can see someone just kind of bumped into the dock here. And I tried to straighten this out and I had to call in reinforcements. This screw right here is stripped out. So what I'm going to do is take this screw out and then that allows us to kind of stick something behind, behind here and pry this trim straight, put a new screw in and it'll be good to go. good down here it's a good thing about one of these aluminum trailers you can't hide anything you can really see the bottom in great detail well there's the outside let's go jump inside and take a look all right now we're gonna take a look at the interior condition of this beautiful chaparral so to the port side this lifts up for storage 